What's up folks, it's your man EM here in my kitchen, as usual. Just got some dogs in here that I rescued that were gonna be killed from the dog shelter. Got two of them, one of whom was the most dog aggressive dog at the shelter, one of whom was the most people aggressive dog. I've had them here for two or three months now. I will keep them here until I find them a new home. Some people were criticizing my anti-sad guru video saying all I do is criticize people in my videos, but that's not true. But I want to make a follow-up video about Sadhguru because I got a lot of comments, a lot of hateful messages from his followers, which I thought was kind of interesting. Um, I didn't feel like my video went over the top. I didn't feel like my video really even actually touched on what a sick fuck this guy is. I actually think I was being pretty nice. And I get these crazy hateful messages like, you're an idiot, you're a moron. You, you know, you're a dog. Like, I, I don't even want to, I re erase them from my memories, but horrible things. People are writing me semi-threatening messages. If I saw you in person, like general racist messages, you white guy, da, 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 da. You know, like anti-American messages towards me. And I'm going like, all I did was offered some criticism of some dude who claims he's enlightened and offers his followers the answers to all the questions they have. Like, if you had the answers to all the questions that you had, if you knew the way to higher consciousness and some guy you met on YouTube was able to show you that, why would you care what anybody said about him at all? Why would you even feel the need to defend him? You wouldn't. You would be so happy because you're so enlightened now. You found the science of inner engineering from Sadhguru. Why would you have any problems now and be upset? I, so it is kind of hilarious that the people who follow Sadhguru are acting the same way he acts in his videos. You'll see him respond to people's questions and just be a dick. Like I'm not even gonna talk about, I'm not even gonna talk about his spiritual enlightenment, the fact that he's just repackaging uh, typical Indian spirituality and religious science, which is great stuff. There's a lot of great stuff there, 100%. India, no arguing, has one of the oldest intact religious science systems in the entire world, if not the oldest. And all of the sciences there of spirituality and yoga and meditation, that shit's legit. So, you know, my own grandpa went to India and actually learned how to make his heart stop beating with his mind. So it's not like Sadhguru is telling you anything new. He's telling you stuff that's been available in India and you can read in books and you can hear about it from other spiritual teachers that aren't assholes. The real issue I have with him is him just being a jerk and people asking these questions and he responds in this way that was just like so cold, so rude, so condescending. Everybody's laughing at the person asking questions. You know, somebody accuses him of doing something wrong and immediately he gets defensive and starts belittling the person. Somebody accused him of messing up the, the elephant sanctuaries stealing a bunch of tribal land from people. He just shoots her down and basically calls her an idiot. But then I did more research on Sadhguru because I was so curious, was I right or was I wrong? All of his followers are saying he's the most amazing guy in the world. So I said, let me watch just a couple more videos, see what I find. So I turn on one video. Actually, I researched this on Google. I find out Sadhguru's wife mysteriously dies. Like some years ago, maybe three, five years ago, his wife dies. He tells everybody, oh, my wife, she decided to ascend to a higher level of consciousness. She decided to leave her body. So she just left her body and she chose to die because she was so enlightened. She just decided that the, the spiritual plane would be better for her. Okay, that kind of makes sense. No, it doesn't make any sense. Like. I've never heard, I actually have a degree in religious studies from UCSB in California here, okay? I've, other than fanciful mystical stories from the past of like Zen Buddhist masters and people being old and choosing the time to die or choosing to leave their body, you know, or kind of knowing the time that they're gonna die and being like, okay, I'm gonna die and they write a poem and they die or Native American, wise Native American people be like, oh, okay, hey, I'm gonna say my piece, I'm gonna sing my song, okay, it's time to go because of natural causes. I've never, far as I remember, heard of anybody 
prematurely while they have a healthy young body and are full of all this wisdom they could share with people, they just decide to leave their body. I'm sure there's stories out there. I've never heard of one, but apparently Sadhguru tells this like this is just, and this is how brainwashed his followers are that he could sit there and tell a story that his wife just decided to leave her body and nobody questions him. Nobody is like, what? Your wife just decided to leave her body. Um, that's kind of weird because she had a small child. She just left her child behind. And oh, that's weird. Now you're married to somebody new. In fact, you arguably already had this other woman um, before your wife died. Oh, and that's strange. Your wife's body just mysteriously, you decided to have it burned in a traditional uh, Indian funeral before the authorities had a chance to investigate and look at the body. Because like you were just in such a rush to honor her body and do this ceremony that you destroyed the body before any law enforcement could look at it and see if you'd poisoned your wife or murdered her. So to me, it's pretty obvious Sadhguru murdered his wife or is in some level connected with the murder of his wife. I mean, this is like Carol Baskin from Tiger King where she's like, I mean, expects people to believe this story that she changed the will the day that he disappears, she broke. someone breaks into the office and changes the will to say, in the case of death or disappearance, I get all the money. So that was insane. Like, I literally couldn't believe that Sadhguru is putting a video on YouTube defending himself, saying, my wife chose to leave her body and her child behind and me behind and this beautiful world behind and all this wisdom that she knows behind because she wanted to ascend to a higher level of consciousness. That's some crazy cult shit. If I've ever heard it, that's some uh, Jonestown type shit, drink the Kool-Aid type stuff. Waco, Texas type shit. Like that's some culty shit to be like, oh yeah, we're just so enlightened that we're going to choose to die. And I'm not opposed to people committing suicide who are suffering. I mean, I think everybody has a right to decide what they do with their life. I think suicide's tragic. I think it is sad. But for somebody to claim somebody basically commits suicide just mentally or spiritually by just leaving their body is completely insane. So anyways, I had to put this video out there because I get all these messages every day, people hating on me. Oh, you're evil. You're a moron. And I want to just go, guys, look at the facts. This dude's wife dies. He claims she left to leave his bot. She left her body. He has another wife. I think she's younger. The body was destroyed before the authorities were able to look at it. It's crazy. Go do the research for yourself. Like he himself, it would be one thing if I just read this story, but he himself tells the story. That's the craziest part. That's how sick this guy is in his head. That's how people like this who claim to have all the answers, who claim to understand the mysteries of the universe and they can explain them to anybody for just, you know, $100 or $50 or just buy my book. That's how sick these fuckers are because they take advantage of the fact that that people are naive, that people want the answers, that people want so bad to believe that somebody has all the answers for everybody, that somebody has a one-size-fits-all solution that fits everybody in the entire world, and they should give their money or their resources or their time or, you know, stop talking to family members or leave hate messages on a guy who's like me's YouTube channel for him. It's sad that he's taking advantage of naive people who haven't researched the world's religions, haven't studied the founders of all the world's traditions haven't realized that life is a mystery and that anybody who claims to have all the answers is lying. They haven't realized that yet. They haven't studied the works of Guru Nanak. They haven't read the Tao Te Ching. They haven't read or studied the Mahayana Buddhist philosophy, the, you know, Yoga Charas and, you know, Patanjali's Yoga Sutras. No, they haven't read the Bible for themselves and the teachings of Christ or the Quran as well. They haven't done that. And then also research the history of all these traditions outside of their own religion, just coming from an objective historical source. 
Have they studied the Old Testament, the Tanakh? No, they haven't. So they have some guy who claims to have all the answers and they think that that's what's going on there, you guys. They think, oh, somebody's got all the answers. Oh, thank goodness, somebody's figured it all out. Oh man, I'm so lucky. And they don't realize, no, you're being tricked and it's sad. And this has been happening for thousands of years. And I'm not saying that a lot of these founders of these religions were tricking people. Probably a lot of them weren't. But over time, they're, the mysteries that they're sharing with people and the esoteric um, subtleties of their teachings get overlooked. And it becomes like, oh, we have the answers. Do what we say. Drink the Kool-Aid, too. And give us your money. So that's where it's sad. You know, and um, go walk, I'll tell you this, okay? Go walk out into the desert. Go look for that special place that calls to you out of the dreams from the other world. Go find that sacred cave or that sacred hollow or that sacred flat place of earth. Go find it there. You know, push yourself to the limit and look for yourself to find the answers. And you'll see for yourself what answers there are or you'll die. But you'll know something. I mean, you might know that you don't know, but you will know, like, once you pushed yourself that far on your own. So you don't need Sadhguru to teach you things. You don't need Sadhguru to tell you things. You can do the research on your own. You can study things on your own. You can go to a bunch of different teachers, a bunch of different rocks and hills and mountains and animals and grandmothers and grandpas and babies and, you know ocean the river the streams like you could go look for this stuff for yourself and find your own truth and maybe it'll be the same as Sadhguru maybe it won't be but I'm telling you guys like oh you can come in I'm telling you guys like this is what I'm doing helping people out helping my buddy out here who you know is a hardworking guy. I let him stay here at my property. He just helps out a little bit here and there. I bought him a trailer. He's just paying me back, okay? So you guys just, these fucking gurus on the internet, most of them, I'm sorry, they're just, it's really sad. In a time like this when people are so confused, people are just putting out this nonsense, creating further division, further things for people to argue about, further things for people to, you know, get all fired up about. Okay, you guys, Sadhguru killed his wife. That's the facts. End of discussion. Stop defending Sadhguru, you guys. He's a murderer.